These are nine tips that I use every single day with my workflow that help me design faster in Figma. First one is using keyboard shortcuts to jump around in the layer panel. Now, if you didn't know, using shift, enter, and enter allows you to jump ahead in the layers panel. And one way to show this is over here, I've got a square, a rounded square, and then a frame that holds that square inside. So you can imagine if I have a lot of layers here, this would be a pain to filter through all of them, figure out which one is the right layer. And this is just a really fast way to do this. All I have to do is click enter, and it'll automatically jump into the child element or the child layer inside that order. Now to undo that or to jump back up to the parent element, all I have to do is click shift and enter. Very easy. That was the first one. Let's jump into the second one, which is using the slash key on your keyboard to move a cursor around that has a chat box. Now this is extremely useful if you're working with teams and you want to showcase something specific on your design. Now I've been in calls before where I'm like, oh, no, just follow my mouse, see something here, see something there. And this is honestly just so much easier. If I want to point to an element on the canvas and I just want to say like this design right here. Well, then people that are following my cursor will understand what I'm talking about and will see what I'm actually pointing towards. Now, third one is a little bit different. So if I go ahead and click into the actual frame that I want, this square here, this circled square, a lot of people didn't know this, but you can actually click on the hex code here and type in a color that you want. So let's say, for example, I want the color red. Well, then if I type that in, I get that exact color right there. If I type in something like gold, well, then it'll pick the closest color that it thinks it is to gold. Now, there are some best practices out there to use this, but use it with a grain of salt because obviously if you want a very specific color, then using gold or using something like silver won't be as accurate. Now there are some secret codes out there. So for example, if I type in sleek, we'll see that we get this very sleek gray color. Now obviously it might be faster just to go into the layers panel and pick the colors that I want, but it's there for you if you want to use that. Now the next tip is something that I've used before on this channel and I talk about it all the time. Something that I hate in Figma is renaming layers. So say for example, we had a ton of these frames, right? We had of all these different frames and sometimes they're in order. Sometimes they have a different variation. Sometimes they're just different designs from the last one and it's impossible to sort of keep track of all of them, right? Well, one really easy way to rename all of these and to sort of group it better into what you want to group it into is use the shortcut command R to bring up the rename layer or the, the rename modal. Now, what we can do here is start typing what we want these frames to be called. So say, for example, we're designing a modal or a landing page, something like that. I'll just type in modal and then I can click this number over here that goes number upwards. That will automatically change the names of the layers to go from one to 12, just like we have it here automatically natively, except now we have the word that we want before us, right? So now we have modal, which explains that this is the process that I went from getting from modal one to modal 12, which, which might be my end design, right? So if I go ahead and click rename, we'll see that that's exactly what we have right here. So we've got modal zero one all the way to 12. Now, if I wanted to add more, unfortunately, this wouldn't scale like that. It wouldn't automatically add the 13th one. But again, it's super easy just to select the ones that we want, use command R and then type in modal and then use the number tab. Now, sometimes in Figma, you'll be moving this boundary box like you would normally, right? You'd be trying to figure out how you can center the text or how you can fit the boundary box to actually snugly fit the text. And if you're really new to Figma, you might not actually know what these buttons do. Well, one really quick, easy way to go about this is to just double click on the left side or the right side of the panel here, and it'll automatically fit all the boundary box snugly to the text. Now, if you'll see, it also changed this width method right over here, and it changed it to auto width. So that's exactly what that does. It's just a shortcut way to do that. If you have a lot of text, it's hard to go into the text panel and change all of them individually. It's easier just to go and double click on the right side of the boundary box. Now, sometimes in Figma, in complex layouts, you start piling layers on top of layers, and sometimes pieces of text get hidden behind other layers and it's impossible to actually find them just by going through the layer panel because maybe you didn't name them correctly or maybe there's too many to go around, right? Well, one really easy way to do this and to actually find that layer that you want is just to hit command Y. And when we do that, we essentially go into X-ray mode. What X-ray mode allows us to do is it allows us to see everything that's hidden within all those layers. So it allows us to see everything without anything on top. So it allows us to see all the layers on the canvas without any colors, without any shading, without any shapes, any anything like that. It just allows us to see everything within the boundary boxes of that shape or that element. So if I toggle between these two, you'll see that there's actually a hidden text right here. And once we can see the text, then it's super easy to just go and select it directly from the layer panel or just by selecting it directly in the canvas. So now we know exactly what's hidden behind those elements and we can completely see all of our designs. Tip number eight is something that not a lot of people actually know. So in Figma, you can actually copy and paste effects between two canvases or between two layers as well. Now, one way to do this is just to select the actual effect that I want, which is really important because sometimes you'll have many different effects. So just select the one that you want, 
hit Command C for copy, and then you can just paste it onto the frame that you want or the canvas that you want, and the effect is now transferred over. So that's super simple, very quick one, not a lot of people know that one. Now, last one is something that, again, not a lot of people know, but it's extremely powerful. If you have many elements that you want to convert into one frame or you want to group those elements into one frame, one very easy way to do that is just to select the elements that you want, for example, these two, and you hit Option, Command, and G. Now, what that will do is make a frame out of the elements that you just selected. So in a way, you're creating a group, but it's actually a frame which has more powers than a group would. Now, let me know what you guys thought about these tips down below. Let me know if they actually helped you or they didn't. I'm really eager to know, and let me know if you have any tips that I should know about as well down below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you'll also enjoy my other Figma tips video that I made a while back. So be sure that you watch that one right there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.